Okay, so here we are, as you can see, we're dealing with a 50 gallon gas Bradford Whitewater heater, one of our favorites, but it's just not compatible to all of this solar power that they're producing. So it's gonna be our job right now to go through the entire system to figure out what's gonna be better, that electric tankless or the, the hybrid. hybrid. guys so here's the 50 gallon Bradford white gas that we're about to replace here so after we do all of our calculations and determine exactly if we're gonna go with a tankless electrical or a hybrid so very first thing we need to do is figure out the fixture load anytime you're dealing with any type of water heater you always want to start with the fixture load and then the next step is to take a look at the power which we're gonna take you and go through that and then we'll be able to determine what's gonna be the best fit or the best investment for our customer. Let's go uh, check out with Josh right now. He's evaluating the Tesla Powerwall system. So let's go over there and see what he has to say right off the bat. So how are we doing, Josh? Good, good. This is Josh, guys, by the way. Amazing technician. One of the most intelligent tradesmen I have ever met. His brain is smarter than mine and Dave's put together. I don't know about that. But anyway. Don't be so modest, guys. <laughs> Based on their load capacity and what their wall pack's capable of producing, I'm going to have to say that they're not going to be candidates for the tankless, the electric tankless. We're definitely going to have to go with the hybrid. And why is that? I'm sorry. The capacity, the load capacity on the tankless is going to exceed what their wall pack is capable of handling. And the client wants to be able to utilize the wall pack system in the event that the power goes down to energize his water heater. Got it. So, so, so he assumed he had extra power. Well, he, he, he told me right off the bat, he goes, I have so much power, it shouldn't be a problem at all. But see, the thing is, is his understanding is he is producing more than what he's using. Right. So he's basically feeding it back to the power company, which they give him a small amount of a credit at the end of okay. the year. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be a candidate for how much power that that tankless is going to consume in order to be able to operate. Got right. It. As far as power... We've got to run power regardless. We have to run power regardless, okay. yes. So guys, this is the Tesla power wall pack system here. Pretty innovative feature here, right, Josh, as far as the solar? Yeah, it's one of the best systems on the market. So on the hybrids, guys, there's either a 50 gallon, because it's got a 50 gallon gas right now, or the uh, either if we go with either Ream or Bradford White, they're going to make an 80 gallon, right, as an option. Yeah, yeah, because okay. he he said he, he wants to move up to a the highest demand water heater possible. So that's yeah. going to be the 80. And gallon. 80 would be sufficient yeah, for sufficient. three full baths. Yeah. All right, let's go check it out now. Obvious is, is this right here. The storage is literally right behind the panels, so we're trying to figure out a way where we could run the electrical to the new location of the heater. Because we had those storage shelving there, instead of moving all those items, we're going to try to fish it in between the drywall and that to where we can get it up and over and then run it exposed on the ceiling. How's that? Might be hitting a fire block, Dave. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to feed it here, come up over, over the storage here and then run it exposed, kind of like what they did right here. Oh yeah, got it, got it. Hang tight. All right, yeah, Dave did a good job. He was able to fish that through. Fish sticks, they're amazing. Yeah, what I did is I just kind of kicked it off to the right, and then it uh -huh. went in this way right here. So, Josh, I don't know, Dave's beating you on uh, intelligence yeah, here. Yeah, you were trying to fish it one way, he comes over, takes over, it goes the other you way. You can go that's, home now. That's where 30 really years of experience now. comes into play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, Shaz. Hey, Dave. Uh, I've got a little bit of a problem here with, uh, with the water heater. That we, you know, that we were supposed to install today. What's the problem? Uh, so I put the order in, you know, last week on Tuesday, the twenty-third, and I was, I was told, hey, I said I need it delivered in Granada Hills. Here's the address, etc. I need it there Monday by eleven, and I was told, yep, yeah, no problem. We'll take care of it for you. And that was it. I know. And then so, I had, jo I had Josh call on Friday to confirm for <laughs> delivery this morning. And so I actually went oh, there. And I was like, hey, just wanted to check status, make sure 
you know, it's on its way because it was. All right, so bottom line on. is, what what are we going to do? Because I'm I'm about ready to disconnect this water heater, and I can't have these homeowners without hot water. Oh. So I said, I said, where is this water heater? And it's like way out in Corona or something like that. So what's the, the solution? I think is to send heat. Luis out there. Okay, well, you need to send them now, though, because we're already running power. I'm just about to drain this water heater, Shez. That's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. We called twice last week. Well, it looks like they do have it in Corona, but that's, you know, it's two and a half hours away from our shop, you guys. And Ferguson, where we ordered, is two blocks from our shop. So, so this is what makes our job frustrating, is that we try to communicate and get everything all coordinated, and then we end up getting stuck with loss of time, hours, wear and tear on our truck, gas, all of that, and we probably won't be done now until later this afternoon, the frustrating part when people don't know how to do their job. So let's go back with Josh and continue running the electrical. I was just trying to get ahead of the game here. All right, guys, so we've uh, connected the uh, MC cable to our uh, fish cable. We're gonna be, uh, jo Josh is gonna go ahead and pull it now. All right, Josh, go ahead. How we looking? Yeah, you don't need to like force it. You just want to kind of keep even pressure because if you push it down, it'll it'll loop up. Coil up, okay. Because yeah, I'm stuck right now on something. Yeah, so now we're going to have to try to use this hook here. We were unsuccessful with the, uh, the fish wire here. So what Josh is going to do is try to get it into that wall there, into that bay, and then I'm going to try to look for it through uh, the knockout hole and do a little fishing. This is a little bit of a, a challenge here, but uh, all good while we're waiting for the water heater to get delivered. Okay, Josh. I, I feel you hooked it on it. Okay. Okay, here we go. Pull it slow, he said, Jim. It Got slow. it. Got it. Woo. Nice, Josh. We might become certified electricians after this job. So now that we've got this uh, feeder here, Josh wants to switch roles here. I'm going to be up on the ladder to feed it, and then he's going to pull the, the actual wiring. So we're we're just about there, just about there. Mm -hmm. So there's that little wire right here that he's going to be pulling. Hey. Yep, here we go. Love it when things go right. Nice, Josh. Bam! Bam! How we looking, Josh? Good. Just finished the landing both the wires on a new breaker. We're essentially ready to energize. Nice. All right, guys. So what Josh is doing now is identifying the uh, actual new circuit that we're in, that we just installed. Anytime you add a new circuit to your home, to your breaker, you always want to identify it on the uh, on the front panel. Yeah, as long as you can help me out, man, because I'm getting frustrated. I had a water heater delivery scheduled today before at 11 o'clock. It didn't happen. So we even called on Friday to confirm that the delivery was gonna be before 11 o'clock. I've got four guys standing around here. So I sent my guy all the way to Corona to go pick up the water heater. He gets there at around 10.30. He's still waiting because he's waiting for someone to turn the, to get the ticket released so we can get the, the water heater over here. And it's, a, it's an hour and a half drive. 